feel a little nervous. How do you guys feel? Definitely nervous, but I'm confident that we'll be able to go and do our best. We put a lot of work and preparation into this, and I'm confident that we'll be able to do our best. Yeah, a little bit of nervous, but also confident that we know our pitch. How about you? I think our pitch will be pretty solid. I think we're worried about the question part, but I think that's what everybody's struggling with. So go out there and do our best. Over the past nine months, we've become more aware of the sanitation practices in our day-to-day -day lives. People are finally realizing the lack of thorough sanitization protocols and are less willing to ride on public transportation because of the threats to personal health. We need a way to minimize health risks when using public transit in order to return to the day-to-day -day normalcy that we once knew. The coronavirus emergency and a look at ways to reduce your risk while you travel. How do you avoid getting sick this season? Could more people ditch cars altogether? Maybe you're feeling comfy enough to get on a plane to a faraway escape. Well, it might be harder than you think. We're about to test the place with the dirtiest reputation what of all. What spots will be the dirtiest? What spots will be the cleanest? We have never seen North results of the US, like this. Canada From has extended its travel restrictions and would allow most foreign nationals to travel into Canada. Of surfaces. Might not even Next into the tank was Jessica Thibodeau, Lauren Brooks, and Preston Neal. Jessica, currently ranked third in her class, has been designated as a National Merit Sunny finalist and is a three-sport varsity athlete. She has been a captain and the number one player on the varsity tennis team since her sophomore year and is in three honor societies, serving as co-president of the Science National Honor Society. She is also the treasurer of the senior class and a member of JAGSAT and Model UN. Lauren, a highly ambitious student ranked in the top 10% of her class, is a three-sport athlete, four-year varsity letterman, and captain of the varsity soccer team. She is the co-president of the Science National Honor Society and treasurer of both the National Honor Society and the Mu Alpha Theta Mathematics Honor Society. Lauren is currently an intern at Active Med Practices and Research and aspires to be a medical scientist. Preston is an academically and athletically inclined student that ranks in the top 5% of his class. He is an honors and AP student and a member of both student council and the National Honor Society. He is a three-year starter and two-year captain of the varsity soccer team. Preston is planning to study graphic design in college. Good evening, Sharks. My name is Lauren. My name is Jess. And my name is Preston. And, and we, we are, are the, the creators, creators of Illumi Germs. We are asking for $400 to fund the development of our product. Over the past nine months, we've all been forced into creating a new day-to-day -day normalcy because of the coronavirus pandemic. One way or another, COVID-19 has forced us all to become more self-aware of our day-to-day -day sanitation and hygiene practices. Our product, Illumi Germs, or Germs Eliminated Through Electronic Motion Sensor, makes the practice of cleaning highly trafficked areas much more efficient. In a survey of almost 300 New Hampshire residents, 95% of participants believe that public transportation is not thoroughly sanitized, and 75% of the participants in our survey said that they ride public transportation less now because of the pandemic. Our product will solve these problems. In a modern setting, individuals have flocked to the idea of do-it-yourself projects. People find more comfort and more satisfaction in completing the task themselves. We have created a do-it-yourself way to clean your seat in order to make people feel more comfortable than if another individual was in charge of sanitizing their seating area. Our product will not only make the sanitization process more thorough, but it will also allow people to trust that they are not putting their health at risk. Currently on the market, there is one dry-on contact sanitizing spray produced by the company Sanigard, as shown here on the board. This spray has been proven to kill up to 99.99% of 40 various germs, bacteria, fungi, and viruses in mere seconds. Our product will utilize the Sandy Guard sanitizing spray and will attach to the back of any car seat. It also has the potential to expand further to bathroom stall doors, trains, or other public locations where there is a high risk for germ transmission. The possibilities are endless. Sharks, will you please direct your attention to the screen to view a virtual model of our product? As shown, there are two sections to the Illumi germs. In red is the compartment for the spray and the connector cap. And in blue is the dispenser rod. 
Additionally, in front of you is the very first 3D printed model of our product on a small scale. To use our product, all the user has to do is place the can of SaniGuard into the compartment. Once the can is in the compartment, the user can attach the top of the can to our connector cap. This connector cap contains a servo that connects multiple dispenser tubes to the top of that single can. The six tube bleed will carry the spray to six unique dispensation areas located along the dispenser rod. Two on the left side, two on the right side, and two in the middle. The upper location of each pair will be oriented straight forward, allowing the, ba the backrest of the street seat to be sprayed, and the, bo the bottom location of each pair will be oriented slightly downwards, allowing for the bottom of the seat to be covered. To dispense the aerosol, all the user has to do is swipe their hand over the installed motion sensor that will be located on the top left-hand side of the dispenser bar. Once the spray has been activated, a three-second countdown will begin, and a three-light display will beep from green to yellow to red to warn the user of dispensation. After the red light blinks, a simple servo will cause a block to press down to the, onto the actuator of the nozzle. This will then cause the aerosol to dispense for a set amount of time. Our product will revolutionize the way that people sanitize and help the public transportation industry boom once again. And, and we, we want, want you sharks to, to join us on this journey. journey. So just, just so I understand it correctly, the dispenser is located, in this case, on the back of the seat. The person has to get into the vehicle in order to wave their hand or for it to sense their presence. It then warns them that it's about to spray and they get out of the way? So the user should be able to just stick their hand in the car um, and just wave their hand over it and then see the actual spray sanitizing the seat. And what happens if the people have been sitting in the vehicle and the little kid and they're waving their arms around, this kind of thing. How do you stop it from spraying? So our sensor, obviously we want to put it in a location where obviously it's not going off if you're just sitting in it. So on top we feel like was the most likely scenario where you're not going to have someone most likely reach into the headrest and just waving their hands there. So again, orienting that in a way where people aren't going to be flailing their arms in the way to make it accidentally go off. And out of curiosity, what do you anticipate is the distance that the six nozzle spray can, sp how far can it spray in to get to the seat, the back of the seat, whatever the door handles, you know? So, so part of what we want the money for is to be able to actually buy this spray and with trial and error figure out the ideal distance that it can make and potentially adding a throttle valve to increase any pressure that is needed to make it go a further distance. We're, we're planning on having the on the side, on the back of the car seat, so in a sedan or something, the seats are much closer, it will be able to spray. In something like an SUV, we're looking to adding a model that would actually go on the back behind so it would easily spray down on the seat, but in a sedan or something smaller where you can't necessarily fit it behind you, in front would be a more, a better approach. And, and what about in public transportation? What? What about in public transportation? So, you mentioned trains, buses. So Would it be on the back of every seat? Our target audience is obviously like Uber, Lyft, taxi, so for cars. Um, and that initial design is, again, the seat that you put it on isn't the seat that it sanitizes. So if you think about a subway, there's obviously seats that are lined up behind each other. Mm -hmm. There's also seats that are located on the side. So those wouldn't get sanitized by a seat in front of it. So again, redesign is something we'd have to look at if we were to approach something like a subway. Yeah, we're looking into more models for something further, but this is just the first design. <laughs> and as we approach other things like trains, we would have something for the back. I know you're kind of in the infancy of um, considering trains, but that aspect does really um, interest me as an avid public transportation user. Um, Trains are pretty much filled up these days. Um, it's not uncommon to, in the middle of a pandemic, find a train with zero open seats. Maybe you do have that one open seat that you go and take. Um, is there any way for this aerosol um, that you could think of to reduce the inconvenience to other people that are also riding that train? Um, so if you're talking about in terms of sanitation, so some subways and public transportation like that, I, the best way I can describe it to you is basically like a blow dryer that uses an aerosol. And if they are looking to clean it, then they basically walk around and basically spray that aerosol with a kind of leaf blower to describe it to you. So I mean, we obviously be willing to, again, supply this to something like a subway industry to put on the seats that they could. Um, but that's the most that we could help with that. That's why, again, we're targeting the car industry instead. Okay. And um, have you also considered the ramifications of 
putting this aerosol on different sorts of materials such as um, plastic, cloth, leather, and um, what type of absorption you would have and um, germ killing effectiveness that you would have in each of those materials? Would you have to maybe um, modify the dispensation volume a little bit from material to material, et cetera? Yeah, so since it's a dry on contact spray, it's not gonna it's not gonna stay on the surface and just sit there like soaking wet. Um, but we would we would definitely look into different surfaces. We're willing to again research into that uh, the different surfaces, cloth versus uh, versus a leather, other things like that. But we think that since it's a dry on contact, the principle stays pretty much the same. And that was a huge part of why we picked this sanitizing spray over something else was because of that dry on contact and try to eliminate anything that could wear and tear on leather or any other nice fabric. Have you guys done any looking into the health risks of inhaling this? If we're going to be, if you, if, if you imagine this to be used in high traffic areas, what are the health risks of inhaling aerosol? Right, so like something like Sanigard, that's even something that we thought about. So why would you again want to put an aerosol into a car that doesn't dry on contact? So the dry on contact, again, like nobody wants to get into the car if they had, we had not done a dry on contact sanitizing spray. That sprays onto the seat and you, of course you're going to sit and you might inhale um, that aerosol that's in the air or it's just sitting on the seat and it's wet. So again, like using a dry on contact, we're kind of looking into, okay, that kind of gets rid of those um, certain affects it. Okay. Initially, if you spray it down, it would just go on the seat. It's not going to spray out towards the middle of the train or anything. It'll just spray down to the seat. So it's not, and people are willing to have their seat sanitized versus inhaling, say, the coronavirus or getting that on there. And I know that Santa Guard also on their website has a section about safety about that. And they did talk a little bit about how this isn't going to be a huge health risk with the chemical wise. Have you given any thought to mounting the unit let's say, onto the front of the headrest and have it spray straight down to, onto the back of the seat and mm -hmm. then the bottom of the seat. And also it would go in this, you know, outward like this to cover potentially the door handles, the window, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so for sure we wanted to look into that. Obviously one of the big things, if you put it on the back of your seat, obviously you're putting something behind your head and you don't always want that. We thought about um, most cars have a headrest you can lift up. Mm -hmm. So what if we yeah. fit it under their headrest? Mm -hmm. But some seats like in the back of the car, the headrest doesn't move or sometimes there isn't a headrest. So in the back of the car, there's nowhere to put it. And so again, the design that we had was to spray the seat behind more for users getting into a car for Uber and taxi like that. We're definitely considering that though. The only issue we ran into was getting it to spray the very back of the seat. So we were, again, if we get funding, we'd like to look into an additional model where we can add it to the back and spray it down to the back, but right now. So is there actually evidence that seats are vectors of disease? It seems to me that it's things that you touch more than, than an actual seat, meaning, you know, like, like the things in front of me I would worry about, but the seat is, is not a high-risk item. In fact, uh, doctors say that, that people don't really get diseases from toilet seats, never mind cloth seats and trains. Right, so looking into something like that, obviously you have people that might walk around with hand sanitizer and that's how they take care of themselves and touching door handles and things like that. Obviously you can't use hand sanitizer to clean the seat of the car that you're going to get into. So we kind of thought of a way, how can we help um, someone, again, feel more comfortable in their sitting space? For a door handle, they might sanitize and they might be able to sanitize with a personal hand sanitizer bottle when they get into the car, when they shut the door, or when they get out. So um, again, something like that. This is more targeting just the car itself. And it adds a peace of mind. I know that when I was traveling, I saw people taking out a disinfectant and uh, a, just a wipe and wiping down their seat. Uh, I think that our, our product would eliminate that nerve, nervousness when it comes to traveling that, like we said in our survey, 75% of people ride public transportation less now because they're worried about sanitation. Do you have a guesstimate as to what your cost will be to make the unit, the electronics, the, dis the sensors, and everything else? So after mass distribution, um, we think that we can get it down under $10. Under. Okay, and so if you're going to be selling this to Uber-type services, if you can get, what does the adoption curve look like in getting this into Uber's cars, if they currently have methods that are already working? Um, again, it was to target like the Uber driver itself, for them to make their uh, user feel more comfortable. Um, but they, yeah. they could have the attachment on their car and have it say on the app, this this has Illumi germs in the car, so people are more apt to ride that car. So it's a small investment. We're looking to make the product cost 30 to $35 for the driver to have and invest in their own car and create more company like traveling.
Thank you. Thank you. I think we went really good. Our pitch was very smooth. There was really no mistakes, and we knew all the answers to the questions that they asked us, and so I'm pretty confident with how we did. I'm pretty confident as well. I think that we did a nice job answering the questions, bouncing off of each other. Um, the pitch went well. We practiced that a lot uh, together, so I think it went smoothly. Yeah, we were definitely worried about the question part the most, but I think we killed that part. I think that I needed to make my answers a little more clear. I think I just kind of like at the end, like, like what? Just stop talk like that. I think I, I think I think I just wish we had more time to really look into the design of our product, but I think we did good with the time, uh, the timeline that we had. So, we we the, your concept was was really good. We liked it. We like the what it is you're trying to do. Uh, it's it's very much up in the air as to how it would actually get implemented to us, and that's one of the big concerns we have. Um, is just the 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 way that it would get implemented. Because one of the concerns is what happens if some someone brought this up. What happens if someone is smoking when the spray goes off? Would it explode? Would it catch fire? How would that be handled? You know, someone even an electronic device that sparks. In the, in, the, 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 in the vehicle, static electricity, you know, how, you, it's just some of those little things that we, would, that we spent some time talking about. But we, we do like the idea of the, the system itself as a whole. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, no